This is The Joe Gaither Show on BamaCentral.com. Good afternoon, Tuscaloosa, Internet world. West Alabama, how are you doing today on this wonderful Tuesday? It's the last day of April. Hope you guys are doing well, ready to turn it over to May here in about, oh, you know, 12, 10 hours or so right here in Central Time. This is the Joe Gaither Show. You're watching us on Twitter, on Facebook, and on YouTube at Joe Gaither 6. You're listening to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or on Amazon. Or you might be watching us on the Bama Central YouTube channel. I want to encourage you to subscribe to the Bama Central YouTube channel. It's the best place to get all your insider video that you that you cannot see really from our Bama Central website. You can get all press conferences and post-game action, kind of behind-the-scenes stuff right there at the Bama Central YouTube channel. Most recently, our friend Katie Wendell was out with Patrick uh, Patrick Murphy uh, was that yesterday so you can check out uh, that little conversation on the Bama Central YouTube channel right now uh, we're gonna have a fun show today we encourage everybody to jump in and join us on the comments section you can send me a comment question query or complaint on Facebook Twitter or YouTube at Joe Gaither six Inv- invite and encourage everybody whether you agree or don't agree um, all right so we're gonna do a couple of different things today we're going to keep talking about roster movement. Uh, as what uh, Alabama lost out on a prospect, Alabama football lost out on a prospect and had a uh, player into the transfer portal. So we'll discuss that. We'll discuss Alabama basketball. One kind of minor piece of news that maybe you saw today that might have uh, sent you into a tailspin. Don't worry. We'll talk about Jaron Stevenson in a minute. We'll continue to talk about Cliff Amore. Uh, Cliff Amore went to Chuck's Fish last night or over the weekend, either last night or uh, – last night or Sunday night, sometime over the weekend. And so it triggered me. If you have to uh, close a deal in Tuscaloosa, uh, like Nate Oates was trying to close a deal with Cliff Cliff Amore uh, over the weekend, where would you take your client or your potential, uh, you know, your target uh, right here in Tuscaloosa? We'll we'll, we'll talk about our top five places that we would take uh, people to close a deal. And then we're going to finish it up with NFL Draft. I know we just had the 2024 NFL Draft, and that's all well and good. We've talked about where all the prospects will go. But Dane Brugler of The Athletic recently, as of this morning, I believe. uh, Is that this morning? Let me double-check his article. What's the date line? Oh, gosh, where is it? Yeah, April 30th. Yeah, this morning, he puts out his mock draft for 2025. And there's only one Alabama player on it. Is Alabama's roster in 2024 – lacking that much talent so we'll talk about Alabama's roster who could be first round draft picks in the 2025 NFL draft and why some of the players might be in not so great situations at least as far as their talent goes compared to league value but let's start let's start let's start with roster transitions and roster management and let's start with Ed Woods Ed Woods, Arizona State cornerback, was here in Tuscaloosa over the weekend. And basically, look, you all know this if you're following the Alabama program. Alabama is in the market for a cornerback. Alabama went out and got what Cameron Howard yesterday. Cameron, and that was that wasn't yeah, Cameron Howard yesterday from Charlotte to play safety slash nickel corner, kind of husky. But you still want more experience in the outside corners. I do like you, Damani Jackson, and I like what you see with Jaleel Hurley and Des Ricks and uh, not Des Ricks, uh, Jaleel Hurley and, and Jalen Mbakwe. Des Ricks is a long, long transfer, long transferred out. So you, you, you need another corner. Ed Woods comes to Tuscaloosa and then leaves and goes to Michigan State, visits Sparty, and this morning he announces he is committing to Michigan State. So Alabama misses out on Ed Woods, but plenty more corners in the transfer portal for Alabama to capitalize on. All right, so that's off the table. Ed Woods is now a Michigan State Spartan, and you wish him well with, uh, I believe, uh, you know, with their program, uh, and we'll see what happens with him. On the pit, on the other side, on the negative news, yesterday, Peyton Woodyard. Peyton Woodyard goes into the transfer portal from the University of Alabama. He was an early enrollee. Uh, Peyton, uh, Peyton Woodyard is what? St. John Bosco out in California. Uh, he was considered a really highly rated prospect. Let's see how highly rated he was. He was a four-star prospect, Peyton Woodyard, uh, out of St. John Bosco. He was one of the be- better safeties in the class. Uh, let's see what they had him as. Uh, four-star safety. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, number eight safety in the class, according to the 24-7 sports composite. 
and he enrolled for bowl practice. He was here for Rose Bowl practice, and uh, then he was here during spring practice and participated pretty heavily during spring practice. But now, what, yesterday goes into the transfer portal. And look, you've got several factors at play here. One, you go and get a safety in Cameron Howard. Well, you maybe, I mean, it's not exactly a one-for-one -one swap. I was, I've been told, I've been, heard, I've been hearing that Peyton Woodyard was a transfer portal candidate anyways, and that Cam Hayward was a transfer portal target for Alabama anyways. That, you know, one was not really uh, related to the other. But it got a really i mean put two and two together obviously there's a little bit of playing time factor i don't really understand if you're an early enrollee as a freshman why you would jump into the transfer portal right after spring practice i mean you haven't even had fall camp your first fall camp uh but rumors and reporters and uh people who follow this stuff insinuate and say that peyton woodyard is likely headed to the university of oregon now i don't know if nil is at play there i don't really think so i think that really Red Morgan's uh, – I think that Red Morgan – look, you got a log jam at the safety position. Uh, you got a log jam back in the backfield with Red Morgan, with Bray Hubbard, with Tony Mitchell, with Devontae Smith. I mean, it's a lot – it's loaded. I mean, that's not even to mention the guys who are probably starting, Malachi Moore and Keon Sapp. Uh, and then you bring in a guy who's probably going to be competing for playing time in Cameron Hayward. Uh, it just junks things up. And let's remember, Peyton Woodyard did not commit to Kalen DeBoer. I mean, there's no – I don't think Kalen DeBoer's a bad guy, and I don't think that it's wrong, really, for – look, Peyton Woodyard enrolls at Alabama and goes through bowl practice and basically gets one game of prep with Coach Saban, one one experience with Coach Saban. And then he said – I mean, you got to give the kid a, a lot of credit. He says, oh, I didn't commit to Kalen DeBoer. I didn't commit to uh, Kane Womack, the defensive coordinator. I didn't commit to play for Mo, for, for Mo Linguist in the back end. But I'm going to give it a try. I'm going to give it a try. I'm going to see what happens. He went through spring practice with the new regime. And honestly, that's all you can ask for. You, you saw and we, I mean, you know the who's who of people who transferred out before the new regime could really get into place. Uh, but as far as Peyton Woodyard, he gave the new staff a fair shot. I mean – I don't necessarily love that he's leaving before his freshman year even really gets started because, let's remember, he still should be a high school senior as an early enrollee. But it's just the way college football is. You don't commit to the coach. The coach – well, you commit to one coach. The coach retires. Uh, and then you're kind of like in this no man's land, in this limbo. This is exactly what the transfer portal is for. Things change on you. You can make a decision to adjust yourself, basically. Uh, this is, while kind of just from a personal standpoint, as far as, oh, I was excited to see Peyton Woodyard play here at Alabama. Yeah, it was. That stinks. But it's you're not, from an Alabama standpoint, are you losing anything? You don't know. You don't know. I mean, maybe he's going to be a great player. Maybe he's going to be a four-time All-American over at Oregon. Maybe. I mean, it's unlikely. But he, but he could be a great player over there in the uh, new Big Ten. Alabama's going to be just fine. But I, I think really and truly this is kind of just what the transfer portal is for. Peyton Woodyard commits to Nick Saban, wants to play for Nick Saban. Oh, I'm retiring. Kalen DeBoer is in charge. Uh, and then we're bringing in a new defensive coordinator. We're changing the defense. We're going to go to a 4 2 5. We're going to be playing a lot more basically nickel package. We'll see. Do you want to fit in? Do you want to play here, Peyton Woodyard? He gives it the spring. Uh, look, it was. Four weeks of spring plus the spring break. I mean, spring practice was spread out this year. Uh, and Some of that's for player safety, but, but spring practice was really spread out this year. So he was in the program and, you know, dialed in and, and tr trying to see what the experience was going to be like. And I think that at the end of the day, he said, okay, I gave it uh, the old college try and this isn't who I signed up to play for in originally. So he hits the transfer portal and it sounds like he's going to Oregon. Does it stink? A little bit because you want to retain your talent, but at the end of the day, this is college football, and this is the the new way the game is played. So you just keep moving. Uh, you you love the players while they're here, and then you just keep on moving, and you wish them well when they go into other places because really and truly, everything is so finite. Uh, Peyton Woodard, you only got a couple of years to play college football. If you didn't like it here in Tuscaloosa, if you're going to like it at Oregon or on the West Coast, better. Have that at my man. It's your life, and I hope that you uh, maximize your opportunity. So those are your football kind of transactions 
over the last day, over the last yesterday, this morning, that sort of thing, uh, both happening in the defensive backfield. I think that football is, is going to pivot pretty nicely uh, and, and find an, a different corner to go after. And by the end of the day, you're going to have an experienced corner playing next to Damani Jackson, or at least pushing Jaleel Hurley, Jalen Mbakwe, Zay Mincy, and Xavier Brown, like really mixing it up with them for playing time. I think that uh, the board is going to be just fine. Remember, you don't have to commit to a school today. You don't have to be back out of the tra- you don't have to go through the transfer to the other uh, through the transfer portal to the other side today. You just have to be entered into the transfer portal today to be eligible. These guys can hang out, you know, all summer long if they really need to uh, before they find their home. So we will see who all is in the portal by the end of the day and kind of figure out who Alabama might be going after from a cornerback perspective. Let's flip it to basketball because there is two little pieces of news. And then we'll talk about Dane Brugler's 2025 mock draft and why there's only one Alabama player listed. Oh, man, we'll get into that in just a second. But basketball-wise, the hour, the NBA the NBA draft basically put out their draft pool today. Uh, they they submitted their draft pool for the public so everybody can see who's in the pool and who is not. And surprise, surprise, Jaron Stevenson, Alabama freshman, is in the draft pool? What? What? No. Okay, okay, calm down, calm down. Jaron Stevenson is doing the right thing for him and his career. Now, let's just uh, get into it. If you don't follow the NBA and the NBA draft, that is a-okay. That's what we're here for. He's going into the draft pool so that he can hear from NBA scouts, so that he can hear from NBA executives and they can evaluate his game and he can basically go through a lot of the pre-draft workouts and get evaluations. Hey, Jaron, you need to rebound better. Hey, Jaron, your shot is good but not great. Hey, Jaron, we want you to handle the basketball a little better. Hey, Jaron, we want you to put on 10 pounds of muscle. Those sorts of things. And he's going to be able to opt out uh, of the NBA draft. Uh, what was that date, Blake Byler? Blake Byler had it for us here at BamaCentral.com. You can check out our. Uh, you can check out the latest on Jaron Stevenson. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Oh, uh, the earlier push as early as where's the date to to withdraw? It's March, right? Uh, April, May, June. Uh, May, tw- May 29th, May 29th. Thank you. It's not March because March was last month. Uh, it's May 29th. Uh, so he's got a whole month to go through draft evaluations and basically get uh, some feedback about his game from the professional level. And then I would be very, 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 very shocked if he stayed in the draft pool. If you stay in the draft pool, Jaron Stevenson, that is a risk you're taking. And I don't think that'll work out very well for you. So from an Alabama standpoint, you encourage it. You love it. Go to the draft pool. Go get evaluated. Go hear what the scouts have to say. Oh, we want you to put on 10 pounds of muscle. Oh, we want you to be a little more physical in the paint. Oh, we want to see you finish at the rim better. Those little things. Jaron can come back home, come back to Tuscaloosa, work on those things, go through another year in the NATO system, and then try again. I mean, the man is just 17, 18 years old. Uh, he should be going into his freshman year right now. So you look at the numbers, Jaron Stevenson going into the draft. You've got Jaron and Mark Sears in the draft pool. Uh, and look, Mark, we already knew about, and that was that was not even really news. We'll see if the guys withdraw their name from the draft pool at the end of next month. And if you do, ooh, you could be looking at, like I said on, on yesterday's show and probably on Friday's show, you could be looking at one of the mo- most talented basketball lineups one of the most talented basketball rosters that has ever been assembled here in Tuscaloosa. And how would you put the cherry on top of that roster? It's Cliff Amori. It's Cliff Amori or it's Ugana Onyenso. It's one of these guys, one of these rim protectors who can come into Tuscaloosa and basically be your defensive stopper, who can kind of be your eraser, can kind of be your, oh, catch-all. You know, Herb Jones, he would catch a lot of mistakes. Uh, and even Charles Bediaco would catch a lot of mistakes, especially in his second year, and was really, really effective at the rim. Cliff Amore was in town this weekend, and just your update for him, he went through the weekend, and he's going to be visiting North Carolina on Thursday. Yep. Oh, Tar Heels, Sky Blue, you know, uh, Carolina Blue. Blue blood. That's a little scary to me just because, you know, when you get in the mix with a blue blood, 
uh, it's hard to overcome. But Nate Oates and the boys seems like they put on a great recruiting weekend. Every photo that we saw of Cliff Amore was big smiles. You saw a photo with he and Preston Murphy on the back of a golf cart, and both of them were smiled up. Uh, and really, everything everything you saw from this weekend's visit seemed positive. And it should be because that's just what visits are. Visits are basically kind of like, hey, take a tour. We're going to treat you like a king. We want to show off all the best parts of our university and our city. Uh, and so Cliff Amore wraps that bad boy up, and he's going to North Carolina on Thursday still. Uh, and look, I would too if I were him. I want to hear everybody's pitch. If I'm one of the most coveted big men in the country, I want to hear everybody's pitch. Uh, you can't hate on him for going to visit North Carolina. Uh, but that does create a little bit of angst, in my opinion. One thing that calmed down the angst a little bit is Preston Murphy tweeting. I mean, Preston Murphy is hilarious on the Twitter machine. Uh, he's been tweeting a lot about cartoons, and he was tweeting a little bit of inside jokes about LeBaron Phylon over the weekend to kind of insinuate that he was in the bag. Now his big thing has been Clifford the Big Red Dog, which is the go-to cartoon to represent Cliff Amore and Preston Murphy at what time? 2.21, that was about 30 minutes ago, tweets really a cryptic tweet about Cliff Amore as well. And whether that's just Preston Murphy just continuing to push the gas and say, hey, man, we want you. Hey, man, we need you. Hey, we're recruiting you. Or whether it's the subtle smokescreen of, hey, we've got our guy to the rest of the fan base. One way or the other, I love it. And I love interacting with Preston Murphy on Twitter. So if you want to do that, you can do it yourself at Coach underscore P Murph. Uh, he's tweeting all kinds of, uh, you know, smoke screens and signs and whispers uh, that all relate, uh, relate tangentially to recruiting. And so it's a lot of fun to follow him. Uh, one thing that I wanted to get into, and I asked a bunch of you guys on Twitter. I appreciate everybody who chimed in on the Twitter machine. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see right there. That's what I want to go to, and I want to go to look at my quote tweets. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I said, what are the top five places? Because, look, they took Cliff Amore to Chuck's Fish last night, right here downtown Tuscaloosa, Greensboro Avenue, what, a mile and change away from me? Not very far. They took uh, Cliff Amore to Chuck's Fish either last night or the night before. Uh, and so I wanted to ask you, and I asked a bunch of my followers or everybody on Twitter at Joe Gaither six, what are the top five places you'd go to close a deal? If you were closing a business deal or if you're recruiting a new client or a new employee, what are the top five places that you would go in Tuscaloosa to close a deal? We saw lots of names and you saw, the, you know, the who's who of names, obviously some jokes like Taco Casa and we love Taco Casa, but maybe that's not the, the deal closing spot. Um, you see Dreamland, you see Baumhauer's, you know, some of the classic college town vibes really. Uh, but you get a lot of other great recommendations like Southern Ale House, like Urban Barn Kitchen. My man Tyler Maines uh, with his joke, Olive Garden. You can't go wrong with it. taking the tour of Italy at the Olive Garden right there on McFarland Boulevard. I uh, love that. Uh, my man Hunter Johnson, uh, he chimed in with, so, with some of his as well. What about, where was this? Right there, yeah. Evangeline's, Archibald's, Chuck's, and Tejillo's, Escali, and Southern Ale House. So lots of great restaurants to to visit here in Tuscaloosa. And it like people sometimes hate on Tuscaloosa because there's a lot of chicken fingers and Mexican restaurants, but there are a lot of good restaurants as well. And so, Cliff, I hope you had a great time at Chuck's Fish. For me, I'll see. Chuck's easily is number one, but I got to admit some bias to you guys. I worked at Chuck's. For seven, eight years, roughly. Oh, man. I worked at Chuck's Fish for a long, long time before I got into the media business. So I appreciate everything that Chuck's did for me. Uh, that's probably going to be my number one spot. Oh, my number two. I like Avenue Pub. I like Southern Ale House number three uh, for sure. Oh, man. Four and five. Four and five. Look, I saw somebody say the Oasis. And now, look, the Oasis is not the nicest place. And they know, and they're not trying to be. But that burger is phenomenal. Oh, my gosh. It's phenomenal. So that's four. Number five? Number five? What would be my, my, my number five? Uh, heat Pizza Bar. Probably Heat Pizza Bar because I do love me some pizza. Uh, and you got to throw a pizza restaurant in there. So you can let me know your top five places to close a deal right here in Tuscaloosa at Joe Gaither 6 in any of the comments section, Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube. Or it's right there on my Twitter. A couple of tweets down from today if you want to chime in with the rest of the people. Lots of good jokes. We saw somebody uh, chime in with jalapenos. If you can't close a deal over a 32-ounce margarita, you stink at closing the deal. 
And my man, you might be right. And you saw some people give some love to the old L ring cone right there on the strip for the same reasons. They got those death margaritas that literally one of them and you might need to get a wheelbarrow uh, out of there. Obviously, it's not there on the strip anymore, but those were some. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I want to call them good times, but uh, <laughs> those were some times here in Tuscaloosa. All right, so that's enough of basketball, and that's enough of roster movement because there's just very little to go on right now. It's a lot of speculation. It's a lot of, oh, baby, if this guy comes, then that thing will happen. I want to talk about Dane Brugler. I want to talk about the 2025 mock draft that he put out on The Athletic today. And you could say, oh, Joe, we don't care. We don't care. We just had the draft. We're 12 months away. You're right. I don't really care about mock drafts either, but – his article and his mock draft holds a little bit of weight to me because Dane Brugler is the author of The Beast. If you're not familiar with The Beast, it's a project that The Athletic puts out every every year. They put it out at least the last two years. Uh, that's when I've been put on it. Uh, I've been on The Beast for the last at least two, maybe three. Uh, the last two, maybe three years with, uh, with our podcast, Believe in Monsters podcast, getting everybody ready for Chicago Bears action. But Dane Brugler is incredible. He... Basically, his his project, The Beast, is basically profiles, draft profiles of every prospect. He had over like 400 pros, uh, prospects in The Beast this year. And so what he says about a player, I tend to give it a little more credence because I know that he's doing a lot of the homework. Now, does he really – I don't know that he's as dialed in on the, oh, this team is going to draft this player, but I think he's really good at the evaluations of, oh, Joe Gaither, oh, he's a B-minus podcast host. He can get better at his pace. He can uh, re really do a little bit better creating segments. Like, there, he's he's really good at, oh, but he has a good, a decent delivery. Oh, he's not that ugly. Like, he'll give you some of the, some of the pros and the cons of every prospect. And I love him for that. And I, I don't really think that he pulls any punches with his evaluations. So with that being said, Dane Brugler on The Athletic today. If you don't subscribe to The Athletic, that's A-OK. -okay. I'm subscribing for you, so I'm just going to tell you all about it. Dane Brugler wrote for The Athletic the early 2025 mock draft. Uh, and basically, he said, think of this more as a watch list rather than a mock draft. Okay, great. So he's basically highlighting the top 32 prospects, the top 32 players in college football or draft eligible players in college football. And that's cool. That's great. And everybody's excited about uh, the new regime and Kaylin DeBoer. And you've heard a lot of people say, oh, I think Kaylin DeBoer can get to the to get, get to the playoffs. Now that it's a 12-team playoff, I think he can get to the playoff in his first year. And while I do think that that's a realistic, uh, realistic goal, I wonder how talented this Alabama team is, especially when you consider the NFL projections. Dane Brugler writes his mock draft. He's got three quarterbacks in his mock draft. No Jalen Milrow. He's got five wide receivers in his draft. No Jeremy Bernard, no Kendrick Law, no Kobe Prentice, but one Isaiah Bond for sure. He's got a bunch of defensive linemen, but no uh, Jaheim Otis, no Tim Keenan, no Tim Smith. Uh, so, look, he's all over the place. He's got a lot of players. Uh, but the only Alabama player mentioned is at 32. Not at 1, not at 5, not at 10, 15. Like, it's fine. You know, oh, he's a 10th he's a overall player. The last pick of the first round is where you see the first Alabama player. Now, 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 we like to deal in reality right here on the Joe Gaither Show. But that's – is that the new reality under Kalen DeBoer? No more Nick Saban, no more three and four and five first round picks every single year. Is this the new reality that you got to get uh, used to, accustomed to? Oh my gosh, maybe it is because I'm looking at uh, the Alabama roster this coming year and I thought, no way, Tane Brugler, come on, you're underrating somebody, you're missing somebody, somebody's left off. Uh, what's, what, what's going on here? Obviously, Alabama's got more talent than this. Well, you look at the draft and you look at Alabama's depth chart and maybe he's right. Let's start first with the quarterback because that's where everything starts in the NFL draft. And it's Jalen Milrow. Um, I see mixtures of NFL drafts and I've seen mixtures of, of mock drafts where Jalen Milrow is mocked into the first round. And I think that he had definitely has a, has a chance to be a first round pick. Uh, what, in six in the Heisman Trophy last year displayed – Okay, ability to read the field, not great, not great, not 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 NFL ability. We'll just be honest. And his throwing mechanics, 
definitely needs some work. Let's be honest with each other. But as far as athletically speaking, oh, my gosh, I don't know if there's a more athletic quarterback running or throwing than Jalen Milrow. So if he takes the Kalen DeBoer system, I mean, you just saw what Michael Penix it was able to do. Michael Penix drafted eighth overall by the Atlanta Falcons. If he's able to take the Kalen DeBoer system, implement it, read the foot, read defenses this year, and I think we've already seen some subtle changes in his throwing motion. I do. Uh, now, can it's got to hold through the summer and it's got to hold through live action in the fall. But the little bit that we've seen in, in spring, there are improvements in the throwing mechanics. I think Jalen Milrow, just for the fact that quarterbacks are so, oh, I mean, goodness gracious, Bo Nix, J.J. McCarthy, they were first round draft picks. Now, maybe J.J. McCarthy gives my team hell with the Minnesota Vikings over the next 15 years. And I'm going to regret kind of laughing at that, but I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't quite see oh, that guy's going to be a great NFL quarterback. And same with Bo Nix. Now, Bo Nix paired with Sean uh, with Sean Payton. They're going to probably uh, uh, match their skill sets. It's going to be a lot of quick releases off the line and taking advantage of Bo Nix's uh, ability to read right off, the, right off the bat, right off the line of scrimmage. Uh, but if those guys are first-round draft picks because of the desperation at quarterback that the NFL always has, look, if the Panthers are drafting number one next year because they're so bad, I'm sorry. I love you, Bryce Young, but they're going to be considering quarterback. All right, so in Dane Brewer's mock draft, he's got the Tennessee Titans drafting number two, and he's got the Tennessee Titans taking Carson Beck. Like, there's going to be teams that are desperate for quarterbacks. His three quarterbacks that he is that he does have selected, Carson Beck, number two from Georgia, going to the Tennessee Titans. He's got Quinn Ewers going 14 to the Pittsburgh Steelers. And then he's got Shadur Sanders, the Colorado quarterback, going to the New York Jets at 22. Now, that's not a, it's not a mock draft. Remember, he said it's more of a watch list. But I think that Jalen Milrow is oh, – I know Shadur Sanders got a lot of hype because of his father and because of the spotlight that he's under. But I think Jalen is a better quarterback than Shadur Sanders. I, I'll, I'll just say it. Now, Shadur, can, Shadur has a prettier throwing motion, yes, for sure. But as far as understanding the game, leading his team, being in the locker room, and really just – playing the quarterback position as a whole, I like Jalen Milrow better than Shador Sanders. Maybe that's my own personal bias. We'll just uh, leave that right there, and we'll continue to evaluate that going down, going through the year. Uh, but Jalen, I think, is has a chance to go first round. Uh, I do agree with uh, Dane Brugler that Tyler Booker is a first-round pick on the offense. He's a junior. He's draft eligible. Now, the fact that he plays interior offensive line probably made, made him fall down Dane Brugler's list. But 32 is absurd, uh, in my opinion. He's going to go in the 20s. I mean, uh, he's going to go – he's going to go – yeah, he's probably going to go 18 to 20. I mean – He's probably going to be playing guard in the NFL, and that's not as sexy. But uh, Chance Warmack, former first-round pick, had many, many years as an offensive guard. Like It's been done here at Alabama, and Tyler Booker, I think, is a shoe-in for a first-round pick as long as he stays healthy. You look at the rest of the line, and oh boy, I mean, Caden Proctor not eligible. Elijah Pritchett will be eligible. Now, Elijah Pritchett got arrested over the weekend for uh, basically speeding right down here on the Strip. I don't really think that's a huge deal, but uh, I don't know that Elijah Pritchett is a first-round pick. I don't know that he's going to be uh, entering the NFL draft early. We'll say that. Uh, Jaden Roberts is a guy I like. Redshirt Jr., but he's going to have the same sort of situation as Tyler Booker. The offensive guard is not really going to be – it's not a position of premium. It's not a position of premium, and therefore – I mean, let's look look at it. Offensive guard. When was the first guard taken for, in this year's draft a couple days ago? Troy Fontenot was drafted in the first round at pick number 20. All right, great. Then you had to wait until the third round. Third round pick number three, third round pick number nine, third round pick 17, third round pick 21. It went on a nice little run of guards. But basically the NFL is telling you, we don't value your position. You're not important to winning. I mean, we don't need to have a bad one, but you're not that important to winning. So I think that really hinders Jaden Roberts. I mean, look, you look at the two guards. Would you rather have Tyler Booker or Jaden Roberts? Pretty easy decision with Tyler Booker. You keep going on the line. Caden Proctor, I think we just said, not eligible. Miles McVay, not eligible. Uh, you look at uh, you look at Will Conformby, not eligible. So those guys, I mean – Parker Brailsford uh, is going to be eligible, but what do we know about him? Nothing right now. Really nothing. 
Uh, so you continue on. Wide receivers. Here's a place where I think you can get another, another first round pick. How many wide receivers did you have go in the first round this past uh, this what last Thursday? I believe it was five. Correct. Uh, we're, we're going to my reference here. I believe it was five. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, not five, but seven. Uh, yeah, it's five wide receivers that Dan Brugler had on his 2025 list. One of them is Isaiah Bond. Does that hurt your heart to hear? Uh, that's okay. Let him go, and that's all right. That's all right. Wish him well with Texas. But I think that Jeremy Bernard, I mean, granted, I don't want to go the Ajayi Hall, oh, my God, look what he did at A-Day route. But Jeremy Bernard, he was uh, pretty pretty nice with it at A-Day, especially down the field. Uh, and obviously, it's got to translate into real game action. But Jeremy Bernard was very effective uh, at high point, of the, high point of the football and pretty effective run after the catch. I think that you could see him if uh, Jalen Milrow takes a step forward. Jeremy Bernard can uh, can really probably some, can real, can move himself into a first round draft pick. Don't necessarily know the same about Kobe Prentice and Kendrick Law, but wide receivers are hard to predict, especially in this offense. You look at uh look at this, look at how, how many of these wide receivers came from Washington. Roma Dunes in the first round, Jalen Polk in the second round, and where's my third one? Jalen McMillan, yeah, in the third round. You had three wide receivers off that Washington offense go in the first three rounds. I think Jeremy Menard is going to be the next up, and I have a good feeling about him. Now, the rest of the offense is pretty meh. We already went over the offensive line, and Really, C.J. Dupree, tight end, you know, it's not really a premium position in the NFL. And while I think he's a solid player, especially at the collegiate level, I don't think he's a first-round draft pick. And then you look at the in the backfield, Justice Haynes not eligible. Richard Young not eligible. Jam Miller will be eligible. But my goodness gracious, the NFL hates running backs. Does not, not even tolerates them, but hates them. The first running back came off the board uh, that last week in the second round, Jonathan Brooks, second-round pick. And then you had to wait a whole another round. Third-round pick, Trey Benson, was the second running back off the board. So Jam Miller. Can be a good player, and I like his talent. I think he runs hard, and I like watching him rumble. But will he be a first-round draft pick? I don't think so. So what does the offensive talent look like? One shoe in with with, with Tyler Booker as a first-round pick. And then really, it's going to be up to Jalen Milrow and Jeremy Bernard to work themselves into the first round, prove that they are first-round worthy over the course of the year. Now flip it to the defensive side. The defense, you're like, oh gosh, the defense is supposed to be talented. It's got a lot of talent, and it does, but you got problems. Deontay Lawson, I think, is probably your best defensive player. And I love watching Deontay Lawson play. I really, really do. But he plays, again, a position that the NFL legitimately doesn't care about. You play inside linebacker Deontay Lawson, and the first inside linebacker to come off the board was Edger and Cooper in the second round from Texas A&M. So, okay, we waited, what, 13 plus 32, that's 45 picks. 45 picks into the draft, and that's where your first inside linebacker goes. And then you wait a whole nother round. In the third round, Junior Colson goes second. Uh, he's the second inside linebacker. Third round, pick number five, uh, Junior Colson gets drafted by the Chargers. It's a terrible position if you want to get into the NFL. I mean, you got a bunch of them drafted, yeah, but most of them are all drafted three, round three, round four, round five, and then a ton of them in round six and seven. So come on, that spells out terrible. I mean, I hate it for you, Deontay Lawson. I think Deontay Lawson is a bad man. I think he is an, someone who brings the attitude to this defense, who brings the heavy hitter, who brings the wood to this defense. But he just – plays a position that the league really doesn't care about. And the same sort of thing, if you continue in the defense, who's the next best player? Is it Tim Smith or is it Malachi Moore? You pick. It doesn't matter. I'll pick Tim Smith because I just like what he does for this defense. He, he will sit up there and eat up a bunch of blocks in the middle. And, okay, he's not going to make a bunch of tackles. He's not going to make a bunch of sacks. He's not going to have a whole bunch of quarterback hurries. But he is vital for this defense. He's Absolutely vital because he sets the uh, he holds the middle, he eats up blocks, he allows Deontay Lawson and Jihad Campbell behind him to make a bunch of plays. I think that Tim Keenan is very, very important on this defense. But he's not an NFL player. You look at the defensive tackles, and that's a position of premium. It is a position of premium. But Byron Murphy became the first defensive tackle off the board in the first round this year at pick number 16. You keep moving, and you got a bunch in the second round. That's where things started to really move for, for defensive tackles. 
uh, Jazan Newton, Rome, Akora Koro, uh, Trevande Sweat as well, Braden Fisk and Mason Smith, Chris Jenkins, Michael Hall Jr., all going in the second round. I don't think that Tim Smith is as explosive as Byron Murphy. I don't, I mean, I think he's an absolute rock in the middle. And I think that he is very, very vital for Alabama's defense. But when NFL uh, organizations evaluate him, I think they're going to see probably a third or a fourth round pick. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just terrible, just kind of luck for when some of these guys are hitting the NFL and how they are viewed. Malachi Moore, safety. Probably Alabama's most experienced player. Uh, He's coming back for a super senior year. Great communicator on the back end. But what do the NFL think about safeties? They don't care about them either. The first safety goes off the board. Three safeties in the second round. Tyler Newbin, Javon Bullard from Georgia. I mean, you saw him. He was a good player. Uh, Cole Bishop in the second round as well. And then people, you know, it started to really load up in the back end. Safety is just one of those positions where it's just like, oh, find a body who's not going to burn you. Find a body who can not get beat over the top and maybe fill and run support. I don't know why it's just not really an impactful position. And so Malachi Moore, I think he's one of the better, going to be one of the better safeties in this league. But the fact that he's not a cornerback, I think, really hurts his value. And you look at corners. I mean, obviously, corners are very, very valuable. Maybe Damani Jackson with one good year here in Tuscaloosa, could work himself into a first-round pick. I don't think uh, Jihad Campbell. I think Jihad Campbell is going to be overshadowed by Deontay Lawson, but he's also dealing with the same the same issues of, oh, I play inside linebacker and the league doesn't like inside linebacker, doesn't value inside linebackers. Uh, you look at the edge rushers, obviously. Oh, you look at the last couple of edge rushers, Will Henderson and Dallas Turner and Chris Braswell, all getting drafted very high, two in the first round, one in the second is Keanu Coat? Is Quandarius Robinson? Uh, you know, is Keon Ke- like? Are you no, Keon Keeley's not eligible? Is Quandarius Robinson or or Ke- Keanu Coat going to be? Are they going to take steps forward and become a premier edge rusher this year? You'd love to see it, but I just don't know. And so you look at Dane Bruger and Mock, and you think one Alabama player. Come on, Dane, you're wrong. One Alabama player in the first round of the 2025 draft. And then you look at Alabama's roster, and I think that he may be right. If Jalen Milrose doesn't take a big step forward, I mean, look, I think it's likely that he does take a step forward. But if he doesn't take a step forward, uh, then maybe he slides. If Jeremy Menard doesn't break out, then, of course, he's not going to be a first-round pick because he all that is dependent on him breaking out as Alabama's wide receiver one going to be an interesting year uh but just because you don't have the same look look at michigan look at michigan just because you didn't have the first round talent michigan draft picks 2024 yeah just because you don't have the 2024 uh, the, the, the the first round talent uh doesn't mean that you can't win a national championship michigan had 13 players selected in the nfl draft right uh how many of them went in the, in, in the first round I think just one, right? Let's find out. Let's find out. Let's see. Michigan leads all 13. Da, da, da. Yeah, J.J. McCarthy is the only first-round pick, the, the quarterback, number 10. And then basically you're 49, Chris Jenkins, 50, Mike Sainer still, 69, Junior Colston, 83, Blake Corum, 84, Roman Wilson, 85, Zach Zenter, three in a row, Michigan, 121, A.J. Barner, 172, Trevor Keegan. So it just goes on and on and on. And – Yes, I know. Alabama was in that game against Michigan and could have beat them if they things had fallen the right way. But Michigan won a national championship with a team that just had one first-round draft pick. Were they very, very deep? Absolutely. That's why they had 13 total draft picks. So you look at Dane Brat- Brugler's mock draft for 2025, and I would say don't get upset that he only has one Alabama player. And I would say that, wow, it might he might be absolutely right. It might just be Tyler Booker. But if Tyler Booker's the only first-round draft pick, this team is still very talented. Jalen Milrow is in line to get drafted. I do like Deontay Lawson and Malachi Moore and probably Jaheim Otis and Tim Keenan. I like those guys to get drafted. If Deont- uh, if Damani Jackson has a above-average season, I expect him to go into the uh, go into the draft and get drafted as well. So, look, they may not be all first-rounders, but it's still going to be a talented team here in Tuscaloosa. 
You can leave me your thoughts, your comments on the show today at Joe Gaither 6 on any of my social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, whatever you like to use. It's at Joe Gaither 6. We encourage you guys to follow the Bama Central YouTube channel right there at Bama Central. Uh, we encourage you guys to follow our friends Blake Byler and Katie Wyndham covering all things Alabama as well on their social media machines. We're going to get out of here for the day. We'll be back to talk about a lot more tomorrow right here on the Joe Gaither Show on Bama Central and BamaCentral.com. Thanks for joining us on today's edition of The Joe Gaither Show on Bama Central. Keep up with Joe on all his social media pages at Joe Gaither 6. Subscribe, rate, and review the show on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, and be sure to read us daily at BamaCentral.com. <laughs>